hello friend in this video we'll discuss about the first chapter solution of the sci varma let's start with the first question okay so the question is find the dimension of linear momentum so first of all for this we have to remember the formula so let's talk about the formula so the formula is linear momentum is equal to mass into velocity so guys for mass we have dimension as m for velocity as you know that the sa unit is meter per second how does this come by velocity is equal to distance upon time so it will be for meter this dimension is l and for time this is t inverse so well overall the dimension of the linear momentum is ml t inverse let's talk about the frequency guys talking about the definition frequency is nothing but the number of revolution per unit time so that is equal to 1 upon time period so this time period can be written as t inverse all other quantity will be zero let's talk about the third one which is pressure so guys for this you have to remember the formula pressure is equal to force upon area we know that force is having the formula as a mass into acceleration force is having the formula as a mass into acceleration so for mass it will be a m and acceleration will be l t raised to power minus 2 why minus 2 because as you just see the dimension of velocity is ml uh, dimension of velocity is lt inverse right and the acceleration is velocity per second so overall it will be lt raised to power minus 2 for area it will be l raised to power 2 so finally our dimension for this will be ml raised to power minus 1 why because here it is 1 is there and there it is 2 is there so this will become 1 minus 2 will give you only minus 1 and this t raised to power minus 2 as it is so overall the dimension for pressure will be ml inverse t raised to power minus 2 let's coming to the next problem which is the dimension for angular speed so guys we have already discussed about the linear speed normal but angular speed is nothing but the any speed in a circular plane circular motion is nothing but having the angular speed so for that you have to remember that we have the formula is omega is equal to theta by t theta is nothing but the arc length and theta is nothing but dimensionless so it will be dimensionless angle will have no any si unit and it will have no dimension for time will have t only so overall the dimension will be t inverse only guys so dimension of omega is t inverse talking about the angular solution we have formula as a just like a solution we have velocity upon time so for angular solution this is angular velocity upon time as you see angular velocity is having the t raised to power minus 1 and the t is there so overall it will be the dimension as a t raised to power minus 2 talking about the torque torque is nothing but force into displacement we know that the force is having ml t raised to power minus 2 and this tens displacement is l so overall it will be ml t m l2 t raised to power minus 2 ml2 t raised to power minus 2 last talking about the moment of inertia so for this they have given the formula moment of inertia is i is equal to m r square we'll see the definition in the next chapter and the, what about the inertia for that you have to see the other video but before that just finding the dimension we just require the formula and that is m r square for m the dimension will be m and for r square it is l raised to power 2 this is our dimension coming to the next problem electric field so guys we know that f is equal to q into e so electric field is written as f by q force is nothing but ml t raised to power minus 2 and charge is having the formula i into t well dimension of i will remain i so overall the dimension will be now m l t raised to power minus 3 t raised to power minus 1 let's talk about the second part that is magnetic field 
so guys first of all you have to remember just like f is equal to q e now the force due to magnetic field will be q v b so b is equal to f by q v so we know that f is nothing but ml t raised to power minus 2 then charge is i t and the velocity is l t raised to power minus 1 so after calculation we will get the value as a m t raised to power minus 2 i raised to power minus 2 one last problem let's see, solve it here and that is permeability and guys we have given this formula we not i by 2a and since they have given it here in the question only we need to find this mu naught which is a constant so let's find first of all solve this mu naught so 2a become b into 2a by i so just replace the magnetic dimension as well as this a is the distance 2 is the constant just ignore this well for magnetic field we just find that value and the magnetic field will be m t raised to power minus 2 and i raised to power minus 1 and then charge is there so just multiply it by just multiply it by i t i into t and last we have what that i t well guys this there is a is here so we have to just keep this as a l this is not i t it will be l only so a is the distance i is there so it will be i t so finally after solving we will get the value as a m l t raised to power minus 2 now let's see the question number 4 the dimension of the electric dipole moment well for dipole moment we have formula p is equal to 2 q a is the distance or just we have formula q into a q into l so q is the charge so we'll have i t and distance will have l so overall it will be i l t let's talk about the next magnetic moment so magnetic moment is having the formula i into a i keep this i as it is a square will be l square so this will be the dimension of magnetic moment guys you may think that there is lots of formula in dimension but as you proceed in the different different chapter you will be very familiar with this formula so don't panic let's see now next problem in this problem question number five we have to check for the kinetic energy well guys kinetic energy is here represented by half mb square but here e is hv they have given hv sorry here h is equal to hv and we need to find this Planck constant this is Planck constant and we need to find this constant okay so dimension of Planck constant so e divided by this frequency is nothing but the energy so it will have ml t raised to power minus 2 and ml2 t raised to power minus 2 i just write it here m l2 t raised to power minus 2 divided by this is the frequency this is nothing but t inverse so will t in inverse in numerator it will become t raised to power plus 1 so overall it will be ml2 t raised to power minus 1 as a for a Planck constant next we have specific heat capacity dimension of a specific heat capacity so will we have formula heat is equal to mcv delta t this is the heat capacity let's find it c that will be q upon m delta t q is nothing but the heat heat or en energy so just write it by energy format like heat ml2 t to the power minus 2 for mass it will be m and for temperature it will be kelvin so well overall it will be l t to the power minus 2 k inverse then we have the coefficient of linear expansion for this we have that formula l1 minus l2 l0 delta t well l1 minus l2 will have the same dimension l only for this l will have l and this temperature will have k here k so l will get, get cancelled and finally we'll have dimension as a k inverse k inverse for coefficient of linear expansion well the third part that is for gas constant 
so for gas constant we have to remember the formula PV is equal to an RT so let's find the R so for R we have PV by N T P is the pressure we have already discussed ML inverse T raised to power minus 2 V is the volume so represented by meter cube or L cube N is the number of moles just write it by mole only MOL and temperature is Kelvin so finally overall after calculation we will get the value as of this much you can see you can do the calculation by your own you will get the answer let's talk about the density now for density we have formula as a mass by volume so for mass m and for volume it will be l to power minus 3 right so well overall it will be m l to power minus 3 okay but guys in this question they have given that we have to consider only force length and time so we can't consider this mass we can consider this length and we can consider time so let's represent it now this mass can be written as force upon acceleration because we have formula f is equal to m a so from there we can write mass as a force by solution so keep this force as it is and for acceleration we can write l t raised to power minus 2 for volume we can write this as a l cube it will be q will be there l raised to power 3 so after calculation we will get the value as this much let's talk about the pressure pressure is force by area so for f we will keep this force f and area is represented by l2 so we will have the f l raised to power minus 2 momentum we have formula mass into velocity we can't consider mass so mass in terms of force upon acceleration force upon l raised to power l t raised to power minus 2 that is acceleration then velocity l t inverse so after calculation we will get f t one last energy so which is half mb square half is a constant term just ignore this mass force upon acceleration and the velocity square so force is nothing but f and acceleration is l to power, to power minus 2 and velocity in terms of l t inverse to the whole square after calculation we will get this as answer i hope this question is clear to you let's come back to the ne next problem let's see the problem now we have to find acceleration due to gravity so guys for this we have to find suppose the acceleration due to gravity at a place is g is equal to meter per second find in centimeter and meter so meter is there so to convert into the centimeter first of all meter will be multiplied by 100 and second square is there and since it is given second and we have to convert it to the minute so we just have to divide it by 60 right but square is there so this will be 1 upon 60 into 1 upon 60 so overall it will become in numerator so we'll get overall calculation will be 36 into 10 to the power 5 centimeter per minute square you can see this 1 0 2 0 3 0 this is 4 0 5 0 right 10 to the power 5 6 into 6 will give me 36 got it let's talk about the ninth problem the average speed of snail 0 0.020 miles per hour that of leopard is 70 miles per hour convert this in SI unit well the SI unit is meter per second so guys you have to remember 1 miles is equal to 1.6 kilometer that is around 1600 kilo 1600 meter so if you have to convert this 0 0.02 miles we have to multiply it by 1600 first and divide since it is in hour so we have to convert into the second by multiplying it by 3600 after doing the calculation we will get 0 0.0089 meter per second as answer well on the same way we will do it for the leopard 70 miles is there so just multiply it by 1600 divided by the time that is 3600 so finally we will get 31 milli meter per second well now talk about the last problem of this part of the video well the height of a mercury column in a barometer in a Calcutta laboratory was recorded to be 75 centimeter calculate this pressure in SI unit and CGS unit using the following data a special gravity mercury 13.6 density of water 10 to 3 kg meter per cube G is 9.8 at Calcutta pressure is rho g h which is a formula let's solve this now now discuss 
the height is given which is 75 centimeter so we'll have hi height we have height with us okay so height is nothing but that value is height as a 75 centimeter well then the next term which was given is 13.6 as a specific gravity of mercury well guys specific gravity is nothing but the density of mercury which is 13.6 so it will be kg meter cube this is given in terms of so the overall it will be in kg meter cube 13.6 they have given in terms of and then density of mercury this is gravity of mercury is given right that is 13.6 density of water they have given as a uh, 10 to the power 3 right well the density of mercury will be overall it will be 13.6 g is a fixed value which is 9.8 then using the formula pressure is equal to rho gh we can find rho will have we have the height given we have g given 9.8 and then we have pressure so well just put all this value one by one 13 6 double zero 9.8 and the height is 75 by 100 which is in meter so after solving we will get 10 into 10 is to power 5 dyne per centimeter square okay that's all for this video thank you for watching